Good evening, everybody. Are you excited to be back in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. It's raining outside, and I'm ready for it to rain in here. I hope that you are, too. Y'all go on and stand with us. Some glad morning we shall see. Heaven's Jubilee. Y'all come on and sing with us. And some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, joy is ours to share. What rejoicing. Give the Lord some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. What a morning that's going to be. Amen. Glory to God. But I'm glad I don't have to wait till the morning to get my, my shout on. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We can go ahead and be happy about it right now. <laughs> praise the Lord. I want our ushers, if they would, to come tonight. Amen. We're going to take up our offering. Glory to God. Give unto the Lord. Amen. God, I'm telling you. Uh, we say all the time you can't ever outgive God. And God's always poured back into us, not necessarily just monetarily, monetarily but glory to God, I'm telling you, uh, He's poured back into us health wise and with families and uh, just material things and, and good things. And I'm telling you, God's just a good God, ain't He? Amen. Amen. Glory to God. And it's good to be in the house tonight. Praise the Lord. Brother Brent, stand and bless this offering tonight.
Amen. How many of you know that we have a great God? That sounded like a mediocre God to me. What about a great God? A great God. One whose splendor none can match. One who wraps himself in light and darkness tries to hide. And it'll fail every time because he is everything. Y'all worship with us tonight. The splendor, the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice, and he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries to hide. The splendor, the splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice, and he wraps himself in light, and darkness tries.
this evening. Come on and praise him if you know that he's great and he's worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you are so great and so worthy to be praised. Thank you, Father, that you have the name above all names. Father, thank you that darkness runs at your presence. Thank you that every demon in hell trembles at the whisper of your name. Father, thank you that you are fighting for us, Lord, that you go before us before the battle even begins, Lord. You are already there interceding and working on our behalf. Thank you, Lord. Before Brother Mike sing or comes, can we just sing that, that bridge again? You have the name above all names. And I want you to believe it when you sing it tonight. You have the name above all names. You are worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Come on, just two more times. Lord, you have the name. Give him a 
all hand clap of praise in this house. Come on. He is worthy of our praise. Yes. We do serve a great and mighty God. And He is worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you just lift up your hands and give Him a wave offering? Jesus, we praise You in this house tonight. We are so grateful for Your presence. Thankful unto You, O God, that You've got all things under control. The God, that You are high and lifted up. God, You're still on the throne tonight. You still are omnipotent. You have all power and all authority. God, we surrender all to you tonight, giving everything unto you, laying everything at your feet, Jesus. You are great and mighty. Holy is your name. Righteous is your name. You are glorious in this house. Worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Worthy of our praise. Come on. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus, we love you tonight. We appreciate all that you have done in our lives. Oh, God, thank you, Lord, for your presence that is felt in this place tonight, God. And, Lord, we trust that your will be accomplished in this house tonight, God. Thank you, oh, Lord, for the opportunity. God, what a privilege it is to be in your house with your people, with brothers and sisters in like-minded attitudes. God, we have gathered together to worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. And if we don't do anything else, God, I believe that's in order to worship you and to give you the praise and the glory and the adoration that you and only you deserve tonight. Hallelujah. For you are the high and lifted one. You are worthy, Jesus. Glory to God. You are the conquering king. You are the holy God. You are a righteous God. You are worthy of our praise. Come on, church. Can we lift him up in this house one more time? Can we give him a hand clap of praise? Can we let him know how much we love him tonight by just offering him another praise? Blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles... Will you please turn with me to the book of Acts, chapter 1. If I may, with the Lord's help, I want to share with you a message that the Lord has laid upon my heart and is for somebody here tonight. Acts chapter 1 and verse 4. Don't get any preconceived ideas because I'm not preaching on Pentecost. Although I would love to preach on Pentecost, I've got to preach what God has given me tonight. Acts chapter 1, starting in verse 4. Listen to what the Bible says. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. But you shall receive, I'll read eight, you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. I want to preach on the thought and then we're going to pray a Kairos or Kairos moment. A Kairos moment. Father, we come before you tonight. We humble ourselves, God, realizing, Lord, that we are nothing without you. Realizing, God, that we have everything in you that we need in our lives. So, God, we come tonight with an expectancy, with a hope that, God, that your spirit is going to move and that the word is going to minister to our hearts. Now, Father, I, I believe with all my heart that you have laid this upon my spirit tonight to share with this congregation Maybe it's for one individual, maybe it's for a multitude, but God, 
I pray that your word would go forth with power and great authority. Now, Father, as always, God, I desire your anointing and your touch because I realize, God, that I am nothing without you. And I can't do this unless you empower me and anoint me. So, God, I trust that your hand be upon me to anoint myself, but also, God, I ask that you would anoint every individual and that, God, that your people would respond to this message tonight, that we would be quick and eager to receive what you have for us. And, God, as the pastor preached this morning on Thanksgiving, God, we will be grateful for all that you have done and will do in our lives. And we say thank you. And it's in that name, Jesus, that is greater than any other name. That name, Jesus, we pray. And everybody said amen and amen. And I'm going to go ahead and let you give them another hand clap of praise while I take me a little drink. A Kairos moment. Or if I could title it as well, wait for the promise. I love this scripture, and many times when we when we preach on this or we teach on this scripture, it automatically moves into Pentecost or the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, and, and that's wonderful in itself. And, and I am grateful. How many is grateful for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lives, the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Don't get me wrong. I'm grateful for that great gift of salvation. But thank God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost that empowers the believer, hallelujah, for service. And so we praise the Lord for that. But as I was looking at these scriptures, there's two words that stood out to me as I was studying on this message. And those two words Jesus said in our text. And those two words are times and seasons. Now times and seasons. The word times, that Greek word is the word chronos if you would. And it means a specific amount of time. For example, what day it is or a specific hour. But when he talks about seasons, that's the Greek word kairos, which means an opportune time or a set or appointed time or a due time if you would. And you've heard the expression a Kairos moment. A Kairos moment is a time when conditions are right for the accomplishment of a crucial actions. Now listen to me. It may be 10 days as was the case in our text with the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. How many know they waited 10 days for the promise? It may be 10 days or it may be 25 years as was the case with Abraham and the birth of Isaac. 10 days or 25 years but the promise will be fulfilled and it's all in God's timing somebody say amen in this house now I want us to look at the story of Abram and Sarai if you would for just a moment Abram was 75 years old when God made a covenant promise with him to bless him this was the promise to bless him and make him a great nation but how many knows that Sarai was child which was a sign of judgment in those days, right? In Genesis 15 and 4, God spoke to Abram, promising him a child from his own body, who will in fact be heir, if you would. Ten years later, Abram and Sarai, they devised their own plan to bring to fulfillment the promise of God. They've been in a waiting, I want you to picture this, they've been in the waiting room for ten long years. They tried to have a child, but to no avail discouragement and doubt have set in. And in chapter 16, verse 2, Sarai, despite the promise of God, throws it back in Abram's face, reminding him of her barrenness. This is what she says in that scripture. She says, see now, the Lord has restrained me 
from bearing children. What is she saying there? She's saying, why don't you let it go, Abram? Or maybe you didn't hear from God after all. How many has ever heard that? You've been waiting on the promise of God. You know you've got a word from God and you're standing on the promises of God and it may have been a long time has passed, but glory to God, you're standing on the promises of God. Hallelujah. And maybe somebody said, maybe you didn't hear from God after all. I've come to encourage your heart tonight and to tell you, you remain steadfast and true and stand on the word of God despite what those they say around you. Hallelujah. She said, why don't you let it go, Abram? Maybe you didn't hear from God after all. Besides, it's been 10 years and God's not showed up yet. How many knows, and I want to say this, how many knows that the promises cannot be, the promises of God cannot be manufactured by man? Somebody say amen. When doubt and discouragement try to set in, everybody around you saying, move on, or let it go, or maybe you didn't hear from God. How many knows it's then that you need to dig your heels in and stand on the promise of God, fight the temptation of wanting to take the promises of God in your own hands, of wanting to do things your way, and trust them, child of God. All you got to do is trust the word of the living God. All you got to do is believe and have faith that God's going to come through in his opportune time, in that Kairos moment in your life, and God will perform what he said. Hallelujah. Now Sarai took matters in her own hands. And because of her actions, which the New Testament says it was according to the flesh and not according to faith, Hagar, which was Sarah's maid, birthed the child that literally created conflict. Listen, literally created conflict between the promised child and the counterfeit son. And to this day, how many knows to this day, Ishmael's descendants are a thorn in the flesh to Israel. You you get the idea of what happens when we try to take matters into our own hands. Now fast forward another 15 years. In Genesis chapter 21, verse 2, this is what the Bible says. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken unto him. Did you notice that in that scripture? At the set time. How many knows that Almighty God has a set time for your life for his promises to be fulfilled? In other words, we're talking about a Kairos moment, if you would. In Romans chapter 4, verses 20 and 21, the Bible says, Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Did you hear that, church of God? What God promises, he is able to perform. In other words, he's going to come through on your behalf have what he said he would do in your life you can take it to the bank tonight church and know that God is going to move in your life hallelujah he will come through for you church he will deliver now the fact of the matter is the question is are you fully persuaded or do you need the Lord to fill you with faith tonight Jesus said in the text it's not for you to know times or seasons which the father has put in his own authority In other words, he knows the day. He knows the exact time. Wait for the promise to be fulfilled in your life. Psalm chapter 27 and 14 says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That word wait in that particular scripture does not mean that we do nothing. It doesn't mean that we sit idly by, twiddling our thumbs, fretting and worrying, passing the time. No, that word wait means to tarry with hope and great anticipation. Do we have anybody here tonight? who's got hope in your heart how many knows what hope means it means a great expectation I believe hallelujah and you may say well you're crazy I'm just crazy enough to believe that God is going to do it in in my life and in yours as well hallelujah that's the kind of God we serve church hallelujah 
I believe with all my heart that he will come through for you. That word wait means to tarry with hope. It means to tarry with great expectation. We wait in faith, child of God. We wait with great anticipation. Hallelujah. Now, I believe some of you, and I believe God birthed this, in, birthed this in my spirit. Some of you are struggling in the waiting room. Some of you have been in the waiting room for a long time now. And some of you have come to that place in time where the enemy is trying to bring discouragement and doubt in your spirit. God has given you a promise, and you have not seen it fulfilled yet. I believe with all my heart, child of God, that God has brought me by tonight to encourage somebody this evening to let you know it's not time to throw in the towel, to let you know that it's not time to give up. It's not time to surrender to the circumstances and bury the promise that has been given to you. Oh, no. It's time to let the devil know that you've got a made-up mind. Hallelujah. It's time to let the devil know that you're determined to hold out to the end. You're going to wait on God if it hair lips all the devils in hell. Hallelujah. You've determined in your spirit tonight that no matter what takes place in your life, you're going to trust God. You're going to put your confidence in the Word of God, and you're going to stand on the promises of God. Hallelujah. God will come through in His appointed time. Let me give to you tonight. Micah's plan. Sis, I'm not teaching on Micah, but I'm going to touch on Micah tonight. Hallelujah. Let me give to you Micah's plan for being in the waiting room. Micah chapter 7, verse 7. This is what the Bible says, and I love this. Because this is in fact a plan for every born-again believer who's in the waiting room. Hallelujah. And I may be speaking to somebody tonight, and I believe, I believe that the Spirit of God is speaking to somebody tonight. Because there's somebody that's been in the waiting room, and glory to God, you're about to become discouraged in your spirit. Listen to what Micah's plan, what the Word of God says. Micah chapter 7, verse 7. Therefore I will look to the Lord. I will wait for the God of my salvation. My God will hear me. Notice Micah's plan, and let's break it down. First of all, we as born-again believers, we have vision. What does he say right there? He said, therefore, I will look unto the Lord. In other words, our eyes are on him. Hallelujah. Our vision is heavenward, not on the circumstances that are surrounding us. Hallelujah. But our eyes are on the master, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. How many remembers the story of Peter in the boat? We all know that well. Peter was okay as long as his eyes were cast upon the Lord. But as soon as he took his eyes off the Lord and he put them on the circumstances around him, how many knows the Bible says he began to sink? Hallelujah. But as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, our great reward, hallelujah, we're going to make it, Brother Titus. It doesn't matter what may come our way, hallelujah, as long as our eyes are on Jesus and we have vision to know that God is going to take care of us. And he'll do it, church. We have vision. I'm reminded of the story, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. I remember King Jehoshaphat's prayer. When he was faced with the greatest external threat of his reign, there was a great army made up of Moabites and Ammonites and Syrians, and they came to try to destroy Judah. This was his prayer, if you would. He said, we have no power against this great multitude that is coming in against us, nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Hallelujah. How many has ever been there? And I'm going to tell you something that may be hard for a pastor or somebody in leadership to admit. But there are times, glory to God, how many knows our pastor, God has ordained him, but he is human. Hallelujah. And there may be situations that arise in his life and in ministry where he may have the same uh, thinking. I don't know what to do, but God, my eyes are on you. And I'm going to stay focused on what you have to do for my life. That's what Jehoshaphat said. He said, my eyes are upon you. For the battle wasn't his, church. The battle was the Lord's. 
My God, church, somebody needs to listen to the king and set your eyes on Jesus. Hallelujah. There are some here tonight, glory to God, you've taken your eyes off the master and you've put them on the circumstances that you're involved in. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm talking to somebody tonight. Somebody has refused, hallelujah, to set their eyes on Jesus because the enemy has instilled fear in your heart and you've got your eyes on the circumstances around you. Take your eyes off the circumstances and put them back on Jesus. Cast your eyes on the Lord. Hallelujah. Because I guarantee you, you will see Him work and move in your situation. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2 says, Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Church, we have vision. Our eyes are on Him tonight. Hallelujah. Our eyes are on Him. That's what we do when we're in the waiting room. Our eyes are on Him. Because how many knows when we're in the waiting room, that's when the enemy really likes to work. And that's when he really likes to take our eyes off God and His plan and put them on the circumstances and the situation in our lives. But we have vision. What's the second thing that Micah said? We have right attitude. What did he say right there? I will wait for the God of my salvation. We hold on, church, but with faith, with hope, knowing He's going to intervene. We won't take matters into our own hands and try to work things out for ourselves. No, we will wait for Him, church. We have way too many Sarais. Sarais, come on. We have way too many Sarais that suggest doing things our way and not His way. Hallelujah. It's time we get some individuals that will rise up And despite the circumstances or the situation, say to each and every one of us and proclaim to those around us, trust God, hallelujah, put your confidence in Him, set your eyes on Jesus Christ and know that He's going to move in your situation. Know that He's going to move in your situation. So we have vision, we have right attitude, and then we have faith. What does He say? He says, my God will hear me. That's what Micah says. My God will hear me. He will intervene. Come on. He will intervene. My circumstances don't dictate, come on, or should not dictate my praise or my faith. Come on. Because how many knows our circumstances look pretty grim at times? Come on. How many knows the situations around us look pretty dark? And dreary, hallelujah. But my God's still on the throne, church. Hallelujah. He's still in control of every situation, including my personal life. Hallelujah. And no matter what's going on around me, what these physical eyes may see, I'm keeping my spiritual eyes on Jesus Christ because He is the author and finisher of my faith. Hallelujah. So we have vision. We have right attitude. And we have faith, church. He will intervene. His promises will be fulfilled in my life. It's His timing. It's on His timing, not mine. I've got to say that again for somebody. It's on His timing, not yours. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Listen, church. I know it's tiring in the waiting room. Every single one of us have been there in our journey with Jesus Christ. We've been in the waiting room. We have toiled, we have tarried, we have uh, fought with discouragement and doubt in the waiting room. But how many can look back and truly know and see that God intervened on our behalf every single time? Hallelujah. As long as we allow God to move and let His will be done in our lives and not taking matters in our own hands and putting our trust and confidence in Him, He will move in our situation. Glory to God. We just got to let His will be done. We just got to let His will be done. It's tiring in the waiting room. It's exhausting in the waiting room. Especially when we begin to uh, fight with doubt and we become discouraged. But when we wait with hope and faith. I love the scripture in Isaiah that says those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and faint not. God's words full of promises, church. 
As a matter of fact, there's one individual who counted the promises of God, and there were 3,573 promises from God in the Bible. And do you know what 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and 20 says? Oh, I'm going to share it with you. For all the promises of God in Jesus are yes. Somebody say yes. Hallelujah. And all the promises of God in Jesus are yes. And in Him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Jesus Christ is the fulfillment of, the promise, of all the promises of God. Through Jesus, we as believers say amen in response to God. Did you hear that? Every single one of them are yes in Jesus Christ. Not maybe, not even no, but the answer is yes, hallelujah. Jesus is telling his disciples today to wait for the promise. Don't settle for what man can manufacture. Don't settle for second best. Don't try to figure out how you can take care of the situation. Wait for the promise. He is not a man that he should lie. Come on. He's made over 3,000 promises in his word. Take him at his word, child of God. Trust him, child of God, at his word. Can we all stand in this house together for just a moment? The Lord has given opportunity for the ministering of the word, but I want to give opportunity for those who desire to be prayed for tonight. Because I believe with all my heart there are some who are struggling in the waiting room tonight. I believe you're here tonight not out of coincidence. I don't believe in coincidence. I believe in divine purpose and appointment. And I believe you're here tonight because God has ordained this specific time for you. Maybe in fact tonight, your night tonight is a Kairos moment. Maybe, in fact, tonight is the night that God is going to move on your behalf. You've been in the waiting room for a long time. Abraham and Sarah, 25 years. And the promise of God was fulfilled in His timing. What are you saying, preacher? I'm not saying it could take 25 years, but what I'm saying is this. It's in His timing. It's in God's timing tonight. In closing, I want to share with you what is said in Hebrews chapter 6. This is in regards to Abraham. Abraham or, or Hebrews chapter 6, speaking of Abraham, starting in verse 13, I'm going to read three verses right here. Listen to what the Word of God says. For when God made a promise to Abraham... Because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. And so after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. He obtained the promise after he had patiently endured. As I said, Abraham waited 25 years for the promise to be fulfilled. Child of God, wait for the promise. God has a Kairos moment specifically for you. The creator of heaven and earth has an ordained season, a set time for you to step into your promise. Wait for it, child of God, because it will be worth it. Hallelujah. Are you fully persuaded tonight? Or do you need the Lord to fill you with faith? Come on, I've been there. I've been there when I was in the waiting room knowing that I had a word from God and holding on to God's word, knowing what the situations were around me and knowing that I needed God to come through any moment. Hearing the negativity around me, hallelujah, and the enemy, I mean, beats at my faith. Come on. Man, you're so far out of the will of God. What are you even praying for? All of those negative statements from the enemy going through your mind. You missed it. God didn't give you a word. But can I tell you, and I'm going to tell you something. Hallelujah. Thank God for men and women who gather around, brothers and sisters that gather around us when our faith is low. Hallelujah. And we need individuals to pray for us that our faith would be lifted up and that we would hold on to the promises of God. 
cling to His Word and know that God is going to come through. I've been there, church. I've been there. I've held on like, a th- like, like it was a thread. That's all I had to hold on to at times. But I needed God to lift my faith. You may say, preacher, I need prayer while I'm in the waiting room. If that's you, then please, why don't you come to this altar and we're going to pray for you. I don't know what you're facing. Maybe it's a word from God that he's given you a long time ago. Maybe it's a word from God in your marriage. Maybe it's a word from God in relationships. I don't know what it is. Maybe in your finances. You know the promises of God and you're standing on the promises of God tonight. You've been in the waiting room for a long time. Hallelujah. You've been in the waiting room for a long time. You say, preacher, I need God to release faith into my spirit. I'm getting low. If that's you, please come. Please come. 